in my 25 he years here in this wonderful parish, in my own opinion, there's been a few moments like I consider them watershed moments, three watershed moments in the, in the course of my, my time here. I think the first was many years ago when we did the renovation of our space, of our church here, and how significantly that impact, and I think it helped us be more involved in our liturgies, our masses, our worship, and uh, it gave us a sense of being gathered around the table because of the semicircular nature of so far. So I would say the, the renovation was one of those. And then I would think a couple of years ago when we had kind of those anniversaries, the anniversary of the parish, anniversary of Father Ray's priesthood, his birthday, and so we had this wonderful mass where his brother priest gathered here and we celebrated a full church and we just kind of like lifted the roof off with our praise and worship of God. And then we went for dinner, 600 people gathered at a dinner to celebrate his priesthood. That just was wonderful. And then we had that family weekend where we came together as a parish family and got to know each other and just enjoyed time together and kids and so forth. It was just a, a wonderful weekend. I think that was another watershed event that kind of propelled our parish a little further and actually led to the next event, I think, was the formation of our parish council. The parish council, a wonderful group of holy people that you have elected. And in uh, one year ago, in the course of a year, so many wonderful things have happened because of that. And one of the things that I'd like to speak about that, that is happening is the creation of a chapel, a separate chapel for perpetual adoration. And I believe that as we move forward to try and do 24-7, to try to have, try have someone or a couple of people in that chapel praying 24-7 for, for our needs and needs of whatever the, the, the needs are of, of us, that it will be another watershed thing of, of, of invigorating our faith life, of being a source of solace that we can come in any day or night and just come and spend time before the Lord in the exposed Eucharist in the Blessed Sacrament. And I'd like to give you a little update on this. Originally, when the idea for the chapel came, we, we, we decided to kind of repurpose this room here. So last time I talked about it, I kept pointing here, and they, you thought we were going to, people thought I was pointing down to the people in those pews. But we're not doing anything. You're still going to have your pews. You're good. But if you go through that door, then you see uh, there's this other door here that used to be just a simple office that we would use. But we started getting, the more we thought about this chapel, the more we decided, well, instead of just kind of placing the Eucharist, the monstrance in there on a table or on an altar and putting some chairs in, why don't we do something beautiful? Why don't we do something compelling? Why don't we do something that's integral to our experience here in, in our worship space here and let it be an extension of that? And so things started developing. Obviously, costs started developing too, so at the end of this, um, I'm going to ask you to pick up a sheet to see um, if, if you would like to contribute in some way financially. Um, we, have over 100, we have over 200 people committed to pray. We have a number of people on committees working on this. There are literally hundreds of people working on that project, and we're going to give everyone here another opportunity to be part of this. So when, when Jason, uh, when Jason went in, Makari went into the room and started working on it, he thought, Let's see, if we, let's see what's in the roof. So he took the roof off, the ceiling off, and realized we have this beautiful uh, cathedral ceiling. So I did a little short video so you can see how spacious that is. So even though the room is small, there will be a sense of grandeur um, that we'll be able to experience in this room. And then looking from inside the room out, we have this wall. This is what I'm going to call our prayer wall. I'm going to tell you more about that. This is where we're going to put uh, monstrance of, of the Blessed Sacrament. So, this here is called a monstrance. And um, a monstrance is, um, it's kind of like derived from the French word montrier, which means to show. And there was a time in the church when the church was so large, people wanted to see the host, they couldn't see the host. So this large consecrated host was placed on the altar and people would spend some time just in adoration. It's difficult to, to, to describe what adoration, it's prayer, but it's, it's, it's contemplative prayer, it's deeper. I heard a mystic one time, a father, William McNamara, who was giving a mission at my church, my former ch parish in Miami, and he called it 
taking a long, loving look at the real. And I, I've always been fascinated with that, taking a long, loving look at the real. So much about our lives we're not sure about. We hear all this stuff about fake news, and you know, it's not even good for our souls, I think, to watch the news anymore. You know, it's just, it's just troubling. But this is the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, in contemplation. Um, I know that when we had the chapel in, in Miami, um, I would go in there in the course of the day, in the course of uh, my work day there, and always felt invigorated. It's like having five cups of coffee without the jitters or the negative effect, you know? Just invigorated to go back. And so um, I went up to Mike Rico, a member of our music ministry, and I said, well, Mike, this is our monstrance that we've been using. And for, you know, for the past 20 something years, on, good fr on, on the first Friday of the month, we're doing Holy Hour. And we would use this, and I would use this to bless the people, and inside was a consecrated host. And this is what we've had since the beginning. Um, I said, Mike, what if we did something unique in the chapel? Could you create a monstrance? And he said, sure. What's a monstrance? <laughs> so I, I proceeded to explain, well, this is our monstrance, but you, could you repurpose it and use what we had in our tradition, in our past, to create something beautiful? And that, what, that's what you see coming in over there. So I did it like a short little video here to kind of give you an idea of his um, beautiful artwork on this. So we took it apart, and then we got the idea of using the base of the monstrance um, as a separate element. And so when you look at that monstrance over there, you'll see the base is actually inserted, uh, inserted in the bottom over there. And so in developing this, one of the things that we talked about, could, could you do something, Mike, that would incorporate some of the architectural elements of our church? So one of them was the kind of the lines of the altar, the lines of the baptismal font, obviously the stain, the motif of the cross in there, which he did with the, the base of the, of the monstrance. And also the, the top, the dome, the cupola there that we see here and outside, there's an element that's very integral. It's the architects, it says, it's remind us of the tent of the Israelites in the desert and so forth. So here he is fashioning the, uh, the top of that. Inside this, uh, there's a... Um, this tile was taken from Mount St. Rita's right before they destroyed the chapel because they had to sell the chapel for financial purposes. This will be like a little slot where you can uh, insert prayer petitions, just like we have a prayer petition box over there. That's the base that I was talking about that works so beautifully in the, in the pedestal. And again, that, that marble is actually taken from Mount St. Rita's chapel. So here we have our monsters who's already giving a unique character uh, to this chapel that we're, that we're working on. I think it's, it's significant to point out that when we originally worked on this project of renovating the parish, it, we actually wanted to do a separate chapel, but because of logistical reasons, financial reasons, we never did it. But it's, it's as if the Lord wanted it and is finally bringing it to fulfillment and culmination in a way that I think is going to work even better than our original conception uh, in those rend renderings in that room. As we're talking about making this truly a beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, prayerful chapel, I got a call from Mark Makari, her and her husband are heading up um, the, uh, the, uh, this project. And she says, Paul, she says, I'm, Mount I'm at Mount St. Rita's Chapel. And uh, because of the wonderful relationship we had with, this, with Mount St. Rita's, they, they took us in when we couldn't be here for our renovation. She said, um, the wrecking ball is coming in a couple of days, but if there's anything you want, we want for our chapel, come and get it. So I remember when we were there, I remember there was an inscription on the tile that was beautiful. So I, I, I went over there and uh, here's the chapel, you know, as it used to be. Inside, you remember those of us who were there, how beautiful it was. In that right area there, I remember some writing on there, and I was wondering if we could actually take the wall off with the writing and put it behind the Blessed Sacrament and call that our prayer wall. We want, we want to have something that, you know, when we're gazing at, when we're looking at, that is uh, inspiring. 
here is the text that was on that wall. And when I saw the text, I was just moved, like, oh my goodness, this is perfect. The text reads, O mystery of faith, O sacrifice of praise, O holy bread, O chalice of perpetual salvation. Wow, if we could get this off. Now, this is big. This is 16 feet long, two feet high. The marble is about an inch and a half thick. Each piece of marble, four pieces, weighs about 200 pounds. But I called Mike Rico a guy, again, the guy that I asked to do the monstrance and said, what's a monstrance? I said, Mike, <laughs> can we take a wall down from Mount St. Rita and then, and then put it back up in our chapel? And he said, sure. So we got a crew last minute together. We had uh, Roger Foisey, who was 71 and came out, uh, Tip O'Neill, uh, Dennis Robichaud, a few people hurt their backs in it, but everybody just came and said, let's do it. We got our crowbars and um, we went over there, we set up some uh, things, and then we, we didn't know if this was going to work. We didn't know if we were going to break the tie or whatever. But everybody, we just, it was, it was a, a pivotal moment. We only, we're only going to have two days to do this. If we're going to do it, we've got to do it now. So here's some pictures of us. Another thing we did, we actually uh, cut the communion rail, because they said if you want the communion rails, you can take them. So we cut them, and uh, we're actually going to use them for kneelers, you see in the renderings. Um, so when you go and kneel in front of the Blessed Sacrament, it'll be actually a communion rail from the, from the Sisters of Mercy. So to save my breath a little bit, I, I did a video while we were there. Dennis um, filmed it. And um, uh, Oh, sorry. Wrong video. Okay. Try this. Here's the video. This silly me with the hard hat. Here's the chapel when we walked in. It was in the midst of demolition. What I'm saying is that the, the, the nuns would face each other and sing their prayers in this chapel. That's why the chairs are like that. because when we did the renovation for our parish, they allowed us to use their, their church for our masses for like a few months. So we moved everything up here. For three months, we had our masses here, and we were, you know, we were just so grateful for their hospitality in doing that. They decided they had to sell this chapel. So they sold the chapel, and now they didn't have a place for, for the funerals for their sisters who died or for their special events. So Father Ray offered them the facility at St. John Vianney. So now they come there. So Saturday, they're having a big uh, mercy day. And so they're coming there to celebrate their mass. And so it's been this nice reciprocal type of relationship. And so now we're in the process of building a perpetual adoration chapel. And it's so fitting that before this chapel is demolished, we, we hope to be able to take some of the tiles that were in this place and that we used and uh, for so many years by the sisters and incorporate them in our chapel. So it's like, even though this is being destroyed, there's a continuity of faith um, that these stones, you know, these uh, this, the stones that Jesus talked about, stones crying out. And uh, so I think there's this beautiful kind of symbiotic type thing, so. So we did it. We got them all off. We didn't break anything. We didn't quite know what we were doing. We just had crowbars and just like just went very gently. And it's all in, uh, in uh, Jason McCarvey's garage waiting for us to put that on our prayer wall. Here are the renderings that you saw maybe a little bit more clearly here. Here's this, um, the prayer wall behind how it's going to look. We had to actually lift the ceiling because the wall, the, uh, the lettering is 16 feet wide. So we're lifting the ceiling. We'll put that lettering on there. That will all be tile. And then the, the uh, monstrance pedestal will right be in front of it. Those two kneelers, again, are repurposed from the communion rails. So there's this mercy connection that we've had. It was conceived, this whole chapel was conceived during the year of mercy. Our patron, St. John Vianney, was known for his gift of, of reconciliation, of, of, off, of offering confession, and people would line up for, for blocks to go to experience God's mercy. So we thought we would do something with the windows. There are four windows there uh, incorporating this mercy theme. And so we have the divine mercy image to the right there. And then we have the prodigal son from Rembrandt that whenever someone goes to reconciliation, to confession, to father, they'll see that huge uh, um, mural over there. 
And then on the left, you can't see it too clearly, but it is actually the visitation of Mary. And Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth. And Mary's words were, he has shown mercy from generation to generation. And I thought that, that um, the stained glass people have begun working on that. And it's going to be very, very compelling and I think very significant. And so essentially, I'm giving this presentation to let you know the update on where we're at. We hope to open this on, we, we will open the chapel uh, the, on Divine Mercy Sunday, which has just recently been declared as a feast. Divine Mercy Sunday, which follows, which is the week after April, uh, the Sunday after April, April 23rd. Um, so we're inviting the Mercy Sisters to come for that too. So I think that this idea of incorporating our space and the architectural elements and our tradition with the monstrance and so forth and the mercies, it's just going to have a lot of, lot of character, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of soul. And so um, I invite you after Mass to pick up a slip. We had uh, Tim Draper, who, uh, who works for marketing and marketing, to kind of like look at what the budget is and then kind of earmark named gifts, memorial gifts that you can give for the windows, for the wall, for the, uh, for the monstrance pedestals, the chairs. We're also going to do a little walkway. We're going to call it the path to prayer. So when you park there, we're going to kind of redo the entrance and we'll have some bricks, you know, so for, you know, for a, a, a you know, minimal cost, you can memorialize a brick to something that you want. So we have all these opportunities. It's explained on those sheets that I invite you to pick one up pray for it. If you haven't uh, committed to an hour and you'd like to do that, we'll have some people there that will take your name. And finally, I'm going to show you, I, I said, well, it worked, we got it down, and I'll show you a video of the last piece coming down. This is the heaviest, this is about 200 pounds that they did. Inch and a half marble. You belong in this parish, you never know what you're going to be called upon to do. <laughs> Thank you.